The Iberian Peninsula, nestled in the southwestern corner of Europe, is a region of profound historical and geographical significance. Bounded by the Mediterranean Sea to the east and south, and the Atlantic Ocean to the west and north, the peninsula's strategic location has made it a crossroads of cultures and civilizations for millennia. Comprising modern-day Spain and Portugal, the Iberian Peninsula's diverse topography, ranging from rugged mountain ranges to fertile river valleys, has shaped the development of its civilizations and their interactions with neighboring cultures. The term, Iberian Civilization, broadly encompasses the various cultures and societies that have inhabited the Iberian Peninsula from prehistoric times through the early modern era. This civilization includes the indigenous Iberians, the Celts, the Romans, the Visigoths, and the Moors, each contributing distinct elements to the region's cultural and historical tapestry. The scope of Iberian civilization thus spans a wide array of historical periods, including pre-Roman antiquity, Roman rule, the Visigothic era, Islamic rule under al-Andalus, and the eventual rise of Christian kingdoms culminating in the early modern period. Understanding Iberian civilization is crucial for several reasons. First, it provides insights into the dynamic interplay of different cultures in shaping the region's history and identity. The Iberian Peninsula's position as a cultural and economic bridge between Europe and Africa has fostered a unique blend of influences, enriching our comprehension of medieval and early modern European history. Second, the legacy of Iberian civilization is evident in the modern languages, legal systems, and cultural practices of Spain and Portugal, as well as in the broader cultural exchanges between Europe and the Americas. Finally, by examining the rise and fall of its various dominant powers and their contributions, we gain a more nuanced understanding of the forces that have shaped Western civilization. In sum, exploring the Iberian civilization offers valuable insights into a pivotal region of historical convergence, reflecting the rich and complex interactions that have influenced European and global history. Archaeological evidence reveals that the Iberian Peninsula was inhabited by early humans as far back as the Lower Paleolithic period, with stone tools and cave paintings indicating the presence of hunter-gatherer societies. Sites such as Atapuerca, in northern Spain, have yielded significant fossil finds, including some of the earliest known hominid remains in Europe. As the Mesolithic era progressed, these early inhabitants developed more sophisticated tools and began to establish semi-permanent settlements. By the Neolithic period, circa 5500-3000 BCE, the Iberian Peninsula saw the emergence of agrarian societies. The introduction of agriculture led to the establishment of settled communities, with evidence of farming and animal domestication found in sites like the Dolmen of Dombate in Galicia. These early farmers built megalithic structures, such as dolmens and menhirs, which suggest a developing sense of community and religious practice. The arrival of the Celts in the Iberian Peninsula around the 9th century BCE marked a significant cultural shift. The Celts, who migrated from Central Europe, settled primarily in the northwestern and central regions of the peninsula. Their presence is evidenced by distinct archaeological finds such as Opita, fortified settlements, and a unique style of pottery. The Celts interacted with the indigenous Iberian populations, leading to a blending of cultures that contributed to the development of what is known as the Celtiberian culture. The indigenous Iberians, who had settled in the eastern and southern parts of the peninsula, developed their own distinct cultural and social structures. They were influenced by trade and interactions with neighboring Mediterranean civilizations, such as the Phoenicians and Greeks, who established colonies and trading posts along the coast. The Iberians were known for their advanced metallurgical skills, particularly in bronze and ironworking, and for their distinctive script, which is considered one of the earliest writing systems in the Iberian Peninsula. Pre-Roman Iberia was characterized by a diverse array of cultures and social structures. Social organization varied significantly between regions, with some areas exhibiting complex, hierarchical societies and others maintaining more egalitarian structures. In the Iberian East, city-states with elaborate fortifications and complex social hierarchies were common. These urban centers were engaged in extensive trade networks with the Mediterranean world, 
importing goods such as wine, olive oil, and pottery. Economically, pre-Roman Iberia was marked by a combination of agriculture, mining, and trade. The fertile river valleys and coastal plains supported agricultural production, while the mountainous regions were rich in mineral resources. The exploitation of these resources led to the development of trade networks both within the peninsula and beyond, facilitating cultural and economic exchanges with other Mediterranean civilizations. Culturally, the pre-Roman Iberians were known for their artistic and architectural achievements. The megalithic monuments of the Neolithic era, such as the dolmens, reflected a sophisticated understanding of engineering and communal religious practices. The later Iberians and Celts continued this tradition with the construction of fortified settlements and elaborate burial practices, often incorporating elements from the cultures with which they interacted. The Roman conquest of the Iberian Peninsula began in earnest during the Second Punic War, 218-201 BCE, a conflict between Rome and Carthage. One of the most significant figures in this conquest was Publius Cornelius Scipio Africanus, who led Roman forces to victory against Hannibal and his allies. Scipio's campaigns in the Iberian Peninsula aimed to disrupt Carthaginian control and secure strategic territories. The Roman victories at battles such as the Battle of Ilipa in 206 BCE paved the way for the gradual expansion of Roman influence over the region. Following the defeat of Carthage, the Romans continued their efforts to consolidate control over the Iberian Peninsula, which was a complex and challenging task due to the region's diverse and resistant local populations. The conquest was achieved through a series of military campaigns, alliances with local tribes, and strategic fortifications. The final resistance to Roman rule came from the fierce resistance of the Celtiberians in the central regions, who waged a prolonged and bloody struggle against Roman domination. The complete subjugation of these tribes was achieved by the early 1st century BCE under leaders such as Gaius Didius and the general Lucullus. The incorporation of the Iberian Peninsula into the Roman Empire brought profound changes to its administration, infrastructure, and culture. Roman rule was initially established through the division of the peninsula into several provinces, including Hispania Citerior, Nearer Hispania, and Hispania Ulterior, Further Hispania. These provinces were governed by Roman officials and integrated into the broader administrative structure of the empire. One of the most significant impacts of Roman rule was the development of infrastructure. The Romans constructed an extensive network of roads, such as the Via Augusta, which facilitated trade, communication, and military movement across the peninsula. Additionally, the construction of aqueducts, such as the Aqua Claudia, and public baths in cities like Terraco, modern Tarragona, and Emerita Augusta, modern Merida, exemplified Roman engineering prowess and improved the quality of life for Iberian residents. Roman urban planning also introduced the concept of the Roman city, with its grid layout, forums, temples, and amphitheaters. Roman culture had a profound influence on the Iberian Peninsula, as evidenced by the adoption of Latin as the dominant language, which eventually evolved into the modern Iberian Romance languages, Spanish and Portuguese. Roman legal and political systems were also introduced, including the Roman legal code, which influenced local governance and jurisprudence. The Romanization process included the spread of Roman customs, architecture, and social practices, blending with indigenous traditions to create a unique Iberian Roman culture. The integration of Iberian societies into the Roman Empire brought about significant changes in social, economic, and daily life. The Roman presence led to the development of new economic activities and trade networks. The peninsula's rich mineral resources, including gold, silver, and copper, were exploited extensively, contributing to the empire's wealth. Agricultural production also flourished under Roman rule, with the introduction of new crops and farming techniques enhancing productivity. Socially, the Roman conquest led to the establishment of Roman citizenship and legal rights for many Iberians. While the process of Romanization was gradual and uneven, 
it resulted in the integration of local elites into the Roman political and social system. The granting of Roman citizenship to local inhabitants was formalized through the Lex Flavia, 212 CE, by Emperor Caracalla, which extended citizenship to all free inhabitants of the empire. This inclusion helped unify the diverse populations of the peninsula and facilitated their participation in the broader Roman economy and administrative system. Daily life in Roman Iberia saw the introduction of Roman public amenities, such as forums, baths, and amphitheaters, which became central to urban life. Roman customs and lifestyles, including dress, cuisine, and entertainment, were adopted by the local population. Roman festivals and religious practices were also introduced, leading to a syncretism of Roman and indigenous beliefs. The fall of the Western Roman Empire in 476 CE created a power vacuum in the Iberian Peninsula, which had been part of the Roman province of Hispania as the Roman authority waned. Various Germanic tribes, including the Visigoths, began to assert their influence over the region. The Visigoths, originally a branch of the Goths who had migrated from Eastern Europe, had already established a presence in the western parts of the Roman Empire. In the early 5th century, the Visigoths, under King Alaric I, famously sacked Rome in 410 CE following this event. The Visigoths, led by subsequent rulers such as King Athalf and King Wallia, moved into the Iberian Peninsula. The Visigoths initially settled in the region of modern-day southern France and northern Spain before consolidating their control over much of the Iberian Peninsula. The transition to Visigothic rule was marked by a series of military campaigns and political maneuvers. The Visigoths gradually expanded their territory, defeating rival tribes and former Roman allies by the early 6th century. Under King Leovigild, the Visigoths had established a significant presence in the Iberian Peninsula. Leovigild's reign was characterized by military consolidation and administrative reforms that laid the groundwork for the Visigothic Kingdom. The establishment of the Visigothic Kingdom in the Iberian Peninsula was formalized with the coronation of King Euric in 466 CE. The Visigothic Kingdom, with its capital initially in Toulouse and later moved to Toledo, became one of the most powerful Christian kingdoms in the early medieval period. The kingdom's significance lies in its role as a bridge between the decline of Roman authority and the emergence of medieval European states. Under the rule of King Ricard I, 586-601 CE, the Visigothic Kingdom underwent a crucial transformation Recared's conversion to Christianity, along with the subsequent Council of Toledo in 589 CE, marked the official adoption of Catholicism as the state religion this transition from Arianism, which had previously been practiced by the Visigothic elite, to Catholicism was a pivotal moment in Iberian history, as it aligned the kingdom with the broader Christian community in Europe. The Visigothic Kingdom played a key role in preserving and shaping Roman legal and administrative traditions. The Visigoths maintained and adapted Roman law, culminating in the creation of the Liber Judiciorum, or Visigothic Code, which became a foundational legal text in the kingdom. This code, issued during the reign of King Recesvinth, 653-672 CE, reflected a synthesis of Roman legal principles and Visigothic customary law influencing later medieval legal systems in Spain. King Leovigild, 568-586 CE. Leovigild's reign was marked by military campaigns to unify the Iberian Peninsula under Visigothic rule. He conducted successful campaigns against the Subi in the northwest and the Byzantine Empire in the southeast consolidating Visigothic control, his administrative reforms and efforts to strengthen the kingdom's centralized authority were crucial in shaping the future of the Visigothic state. King Ricard I, 586-601 CE, Recared's conversion to Catholicism was a transformative event for the Visigothic kingdom. His conversion and the subsequent Council of Toledo in 589 CE marked the end of Arianism and solidified the kingdom's alignment with the Catholic Church. This alignment helped integrate the Visigothic kingdom into the broader European Christian community and strengthened its political and religious legitimacy. Council of Toledo, 589 CE 
The Council of Toledo was a pivotal event in the history of the Visigothic Kingdom. It was convened by King Ricard I to address the religious schism between Arianism and Catholicism. The Council resulted in the official adoption of Catholicism as the state religion and established important ecclesiastical and administrative reforms. The Council's decisions had lasting impacts on the religious and political landscape of the Visigothic Kingdom. King Wamba, 672-680 CE Wamba's reign was notable for the internal struggles and conflicts within the Visigothic nobility. His reign witnessed increased tensions between the monarchy and the aristocracy, which would eventually contribute to the kingdom's instability. The Visigothic kingdom faced increasing internal and external challenges in the 8th century, including conflicts with the Muslim Umayyad Caliphate. The kingdom's decline culminated in the Battle of Guadalet in 711 CE where the Visigothic king Radek was defeated by the Muslim forces. This defeat marked the end of Visigothic rule in the Iberian Peninsula and paved the way for the establishment of Al-Andalus. The Islamic conquest of the Iberian Peninsula began in 711 CE. Following the defeat of the Visigothic king Radek at the Battle of Guadalat, the Muslim forces, led by Tariq ibn Ziyad, swiftly advanced through the peninsula, Capitalizing on the disunity among the Visigothic nobility and local factions, Tariq's success was followed by the entry of the Umayyad Caliphate's forces into Iberia, which led to the rapid establishment of Islamic rule. The Umayyad Caliphate established the province of Al-Andalus. Initially as part of the broader Islamic world, the city of Cordoba emerged as the administrative and cultural center of Al-Andalus under the Umayyad Emirate, and later the Caliphate, with the Emir Abd al-Rahman I, 756-788 CE, establishing an independent emirate after the fall of the Umayyad Caliphate in Damascus, Abd al-Rahman I's establishment of an independent Umayyad dynasty in Al-Andalus marked the beginning of a period of significant consolidation and development. Under the Umayyads, Al-Andalus became a major center of Islamic culture and learning the consolidation of Islamic rule was marked by both military expansion and administrative reforms, the establishment of a sophisticated administrative system and the promotion of trade and cultural exchange were key to the success of Al-Andalus during this period. The era of Islamic rule in Al-Andalus was marked by significant cultural, scientific, and intellectual achievements the Muslims brought with them advanced knowledge from the Islamic world, which was further developed in Al-Andalus this period saw remarkable advancements in various fields, including science, philosophy, medicine, and architecture. In science and technology, scholars in Al-Andalus made substantial contributions to astronomy, mathematics, and medicine. Notable figures such as the philosopher and physician Averroes, Ibn Rushd, and the mathematician and astronomer Al-Zarqali, Azarkel, made influential contributions. Averroes's commentaries on Aristotle had a lasting impact on European philosophy, while Al-Zarqali's work on astronomical tables and instruments was highly regarded in both the Islamic world and Europe. The cultural achievements of Al-Andalus were reflected in its architecture and art. The construction of the Great Mosque of Cordoba, later converted into a cathedral, is a prime example of Islamic architectural brilliance. The intricate tilework, arches, and calligraphy in Al-Andalus's architectural monuments illustrate the fusion of Islamic art with local traditions. The Alhambra Palace in Granada, with its stunning stucco work and elaborate gardens, is another example of the period's artistic achievements. The interaction between Christian and Muslim communities in Al-Andalus was complex and multifaceted. The period was characterized by both conflict and cooperation, with fluctuating power dynamics and varying degrees of tolerance and integration. During the early years of Islamic rule, there were instances of conflict between the Muslim rulers and the Christian communities. However, as the Islamic State consolidated its control, a more nuanced relationship developed the Muslim rulers of Al-Andalus generally adopted a policy of tolerance towards their Christian and Jewish subjects, allowing them to practice their religions and engage in various economic and social activities. The Christian Reconquista, which began in the 8th century and continued for several centuries, was a series of military campaigns aimed at reclaiming territory from Muslim rule. The Reconquista led to periods of intense conflict 
but also to cultural and intellectual exchanges the capture of Toledo in 1085 by Alfonso VI marked a significant turning point in the Reconquista and led to increased interactions between Christian and Muslim scholars, particularly in areas such as translation and learning. The Reconquista began shortly after the initial Muslim invasion, with the Christian Kingdom of Asturias under King Palaio securing a significant victory at the Battle of Covadonga in 722 CE. This early victory marked the beginning of Christian resistance against Muslim rule and laid the foundation for subsequent reconquest efforts. Throughout the 8th and 9th centuries, Christian efforts were sporadic and focused primarily on the northern regions of the Iberian Peninsula as the Christian kingdoms expanded. Major battles and milestones played crucial roles in the reconquest the capture of Toledo in 1085 CE by Alfonso VI of Leon and Castile was a significant turning point, marking the re-establishment of Christian rule over a major Muslim city and opening the door for further advances. The 12th century saw a series of military campaigns that expanded Christian territories, with notable victories such as the Battle of Las Navas de Toulouse in 1212 CE this battle, in which a coalition of Christian forces defeated the Almohad Caliphate, was a decisive moment in the Reconquista, leading to the weakening of Muslim power in Iberia and the consolidation of Christian territories. The Reconquista was instrumental in the formation of several key Christian kingdoms in Iberia the Kingdom of Castile, originally part of the Kingdom of Leon, emerged as a powerful entity during the Reconquista, Castile played a central role in the Reconquest and became one of the dominant Christian kingdoms in the late medieval period. The Kingdom of Aragon, which began as a small Christian realm in the Pyrenees, expanded significantly during the Reconquista under the leadership of King Alfonso I and his successors. Aragon extended its territories southward, eventually merging with the Kingdom of Catalonia to form the Crown of Aragon. Portugal, initially a county within the Kingdom of Leon, gained independence in the 12th century under the leadership of King Afonso I. Portugal's emergence as a distinct kingdom was marked by its own efforts to expel Muslim forces and establish its borders the Treaty of Zamora in 1143 CE and subsequent recognition by the Pope cemented Portugal's status as a sovereign kingdom. The consolidation of Christian rule in Iberia involved significant cultural and political changes the Christian kingdoms sought to reassert their authority over newly conquered territories, leading to the redistribution of land and resources among the nobility and the establishment of new administrative structures. The Reconquista also had profound effects on the cultural and religious landscape of Iberia the Catholic monarchs implemented policies to enforce religious conformity culminating in the establishment of the Spanish Inquisition in 1478 CE. This institution was tasked with rooting out heresy and enforcing religious orthodoxy, leading to the persecution and expulsion of Jews and Muslims who were unwilling to convert to Christianity. Spain and Portugal were at the forefront of the Age of Exploration, driven by a combination of economic ambition, technological advancements, and religious zeal, key explorers from these kingdoms embarked on voyages that expanded European knowledge of the world and established new trade routes. Christopher Columbus, sponsored by the Catholic monarchs Ferdinand and Isabella, made his historic voyage in 1492 CE, landing in the Caribbean and opening the Americas to European exploration and colonization. Columbus's voyages were instrumental in the Spanish Empire's establishment in the New World leading to significant cultural and economic exchanges between Europe and the Americas. In Portugal, Vasco da Gama's expedition to India in 1497-1499 CE was a landmark achievement. His successful navigation of the sea route to India established Portugal's dominance in the Indian Ocean and facilitated the establishment of a Portuguese maritime empire that spanned Asia and Africa. The Age of Exploration had profound geopolitical and economic impacts on Spain and Portugal. Both kingdoms established vast overseas empires that brought immense wealth and resources to Europe. The influx of precious metals from the Americas, particularly silver and gold, fueled economic growth and contributed to the rise of Spain as a major European power. The establishment of trade routes and colonial territories also reshaped global commerce with Spain and Portugal becoming key players in the transatlantic slave trade and global trade networks, the competition for overseas territories and resources led to conflicts with other European powers, shaping the geopolitical landscape of the early modern period. 
The legacy of Iberian civilization is evident in the modern era through its enduring cultural, linguistic, and historical influences the Spanish and Portuguese languages, which originated from the Iberian Peninsula, are spoken by millions of people worldwide and reflect the linguistic impact of Iberian exploration and colonization. The cultural heritage of Spain and Portugal, including architectural styles, artistic traditions, and culinary influences, continues to be celebrated and studied the contributions of Iberian explorers and the historical events of the Age of Exploration are integral to understanding the global impact of Iberian civilization. Iberian civilization, encompassing the rich and diverse history of the Iberian Peninsula, has made profound contributions to European and world history. From its early settlements and the era of Roman and Visigothic rule to the transformative Islamic conquest and the eventual Reconquista, the Iberian Peninsula has been a crucible of cultural, political, and intellectual developments. The early periods of Iberian history laid the groundwork for its complex societal evolution. The Roman and Visigothic influences shaped the peninsula's social structures and cultural practices, which were further transformed by the arrival of the Moors and the establishment of Al-Andalus. During Islamic rule, the Iberian Peninsula became a beacon of cultural and scientific advancement, with achievements in architecture, medicine, and philosophy that had far-reaching impacts on both the Islamic world and medieval Europe. Studying Iberian civilization is significant not only for understanding the historical developments of the Iberian Peninsula but also for appreciating its broader influence on global history. The interplay of cultures, the blending of traditions, and the far-reaching impacts of Iberian explorers underscore the importance of this civilization in shaping the modern world. Reflecting on its legacy helps us appreciate the complexities of cultural exchange and the ongoing relevance of historical narratives in contemporary society.